Yeah, that's sort of fear. I can't do it today. Fuck <laughs> 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 Hang on a minute. <laughs> anyway, we're in Crockett. Welcome back. We're gonna go and have a little look at around, see uh, how we're sort of winding down, getting ready for tomorrow, packing up. We're gonna start up on the roof. The roof is now all finished. Uh, the last week was um, we put on all the metal and did our flashing. Uh, under that, we've got eight layers of insulation and purlins. So what you see in the end is all crisp corners. We got our metal ribs in, everything's dialed in, and then Joe's over here doing all our final shape deal for the can walls. These little parapets just come up and seal the edges. It's an aesthetic feature so that we don't have a corner or a product that looks like a, a metal building. They're just uh, can walls that come up along the side of the building. They're insulated, closes off the end walls, closes off the gaps in the building that would exist if you weren't to do that. And then our there's a plastic vapor barrier that runs along the whole back of the building. It comes out about 10 feet off and that catches any water that percolates through the sand will run out away from the building and it's also captured by the parapet wall as well. These are the roof vents. On the old models we had skylights on the north side of the building with a south slope but now we have a north slope building, one shot, all the water catches back there. So what we've done is instead of putting skylights in we have operable vent boxes which affect the vent tubes that are in the back of the building. Now what we have is we've got a little catch basin and it's full of rocks and there's three ropes that sit inside that attach to your normal boat cam cleat and to open this you just grab the rope, pull it out and it self opens just due to the weight of the rocks in here. We've got screens and metal lath back here for any water that gets in will drain out and this is one of the control features for the warm air, cool air convection of the Earthship building itself. Like that side you can see is open, you can see the ropes are in it, the cam cleats are placed, and this side is shut now so that they can work on it. In fact, you can hear him, he's in there uh, setting the cam cleats in place. And what we've got is a uh, cat here put us on our patented super technical tire cutouts for rubber bumpers. We put these right over the ribs of the roof where it hits so we don't damage our roof or put a sharp edge of the wood right against it. So anytime this opens, if it opens too far, these bumpers will stop it and cushion the landing. Oh. Cat and uh, one of the interns uh, assembled and uh, set the whole gutter in. <laughs> Nails fastened just like any common gutter. This is a drip edge piece just to ensure that water doesn't flow over the gutter when they get uh, torrential downpours here, which they uh, normally do. So this is just a, uh, to benefit the water collectment so they don't lose it all under the berm and it goes into the cisterns where it's supposed to go. These are our cisterns. We've got four 1500 gallon cisterns, I believe. They're all buried. You can open them up if you need to check them out. A little bit dark and scary. Here's the scuppers in use that we saw being made last time. So all the gutters are slanted to come down into these and then these drain into the two sections of the cistern. So we've got two over on this side and two over on this side. Normally they're all like hooked up together so they all equalize at the same time. But here they just have so much rain that we thought that uh, the water going in might exceed the amount of time that it takes for them to all equalize through just tiny like two inch tubes. So that's why they're divided up. Got Jane and Lindsay here. Could you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing here please? Lindsay and I are um, making a bottle wall out of these recycled wine bottles. We're currently discussing our artistic vision <laughs> for nice. this project. Hey Kat. <laughs> What are you up to well, right now, I'm securing the DC electric cable to the tire wall, which is going to be plastered over down into the electrical box to give it power. Tiff, can you explain what's going on in your room? Um, we are trying to prep these walls so we get them to a point where we're doing a finishing plaster. It'll be a finishing adobe mud plaster on here. But what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to capture all of the electrical boxes that we mounted and put lath on um, in a coat of cement so they can receive the next coat that will be made over mud. And if you look on the other side of this wall, you can see that it's the can wall that we were working on. And now it's got a coat of scratch plaster on it. So again, you got the can walls. These ones are yet to be plastered over. And as Tiffany said, you can see there, it's all plastered over. Nice scratch coat there, lovely. Yeah. 
Oh, Lord. Uh, no, turn the melee down. Sorry. Take the interview over. Uh, well, Mike, you might just be the star of the show. I don't think you the star of my Kulo. <laughs> star of your Kulo. <laughs> Mike, what are you up to? Oh, come on, really? <laughs> come on, Mike. I am connecting the overflow for the gray water to the black water. That's Mary, fantastic. Yeah, we go. All right. So that's the drilling we heard under the skylights there. What are you sorting out here first? Uh, just these uh, clamps to keep the uh, skylight closed or open. This is where they're laying some slabs at the moment, pouring the slabs. You can see these ones are very newly poured. And this is a design layout for some flagstone that they're going to be starting this afternoon. Rebecca, what are you up to with this door here? Um, I'm just varnishing the door with a linseed oil. Alright, yeah, nice. So Rory, you're traveling the slabs there. Yeah? How often do you have to be traveled up before them? Well, pretty much you wait uh, until the every time the uh, slab itself loses its sheen and the water kind of disappears, you sort of try it again and the water comes back up to the surface. Usually you gotta do that about four or five times before oh, yeah. it finishes and then uh, then you'll still have to come back and hit spots that are drying slower and stuff. All right. All right, let's go and speak to Chef. Chef, the rest. Oh, good. Oh. Yay. Yes. Really Love really interviews. Bad. Chef, what are you up to? I am up to trimming out the entrance doors on the east end. Fantastic. And why do I call you Chef the Ref? Because I am a reverend in which married you. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He got trained as a reverend so he could marry Jimmy and I. Do you know that? Getting hot in here. Who <laughs> take off? Dance party. Uh, Alright, happy day. <laughs> that was ridiculous.